Okay, and I'm, I'm supported on this uh, study by LifeTech in China, Shenzhen, China. Well, I think there is very obvious reasons why it's good to, to use, uh, if to have biodegradable material as tents in infants and small children, mainly I think because we know that uh, we can't really be using a, a small bare metal stent and expect it to be redilated to adult size vessels. But at the same time, it's probably too risky to uh, use this kind of big size stands in infants and units, except maybe you have uh, by a hybrid method uh, interoperatively. And I think if you have uh, such material, once the stent uh, gets resolved or degrades, it will allow further interventions. Either you can use cutting balloons, you can use another stent, or even a, a surgical uh, treatment. But I think the, the, the idea is that I think it is very appealing that in the sense that if there's no more metallic materials embedded in the vessel walls, it'd be easier for our surgical colleagues to do a reconstruction surgical or procedure later. And I think the great potential for this kind of thing in the application of biodegradable stand is in the peripheral primary stenosis, primary vein stenosis, maybe even arboretin fellows. But I don't know, maybe a quick question as well, but I think the worry is that the stand, as the stand loses integrity, some pieces might go off distally and cause some major ischemia somewhere else. Uh, we have seen this, uh, the coronary bioresorbable stand, but no longer in use now, the PLLA material from Absorb and Abbott. But I think we still do have uh, one being used currently, McMurray's from Biotronic, which is magnesium based. But the largest that we have is 3.5 uh, millimeters, and I think the visibility on X ray is very, very poor for this. So that might be a problem. And I think the reason why we want to really have a stand that is biodegradable is that to help our surgeons for future procedures is that when you have too much metallic material in the vessel wall for a long time, that might put major problems in terms of surgical out outcome as well as future, uh, increasing the risk of future interventions in the way of stenting. So I've gone through this before, see how that uh, it's difficult to remove in total the stent material, although not all stent material left in place cause problems, as in this case here. <clears throat> right, so what is IBS to the one that we're using now? This is really a serolimus eluting iron stent from Tech, which has had 10 years of uh, animal research, and this is currently ongoing trial on, on humans and restricted to a single vessel disease for the coronary arteries with centers in China and Malaysia doing it. And I thought, uh, I asked them that if they can give me a stent which do not have drug coating, I would to try it in, uh, in babies with P4PD, uh, for PD stenting. And I think I'm attracted by this initially hard to believe that uh, a 3 mm diameter by 18 mm long has an iron content of only 8 milligrams. So I asked them many times, is this really true? And they say yes. And therefore, I thought uh, this would probably not cause much problems in terms of toxicity of iron on these small neonates and small babies. So not only iron, it has a zinc coating above the iron. And the purpose of the zinc coating is to prevent the resorption before three months so that it gives a longer uh, a longer lifespan to the stent, and this is the attractive part of it for babies because uh, with the PLLA and the magnesium, you do not have this uh, extra coating that will prevent resorption before a certain period, and therefore I think this is one other plus. And also, uh, from what I've seen, the X-ray visibility is better than what I've seen with uh, Absorb as well as the magnesium stent. Uh, magnesium stent. So just to compare, because the science uh, stand from about the uh, cobalt chromium stand, which has been used as a gold standard for comparisons in all the stand studies in adults, uh, in terms of strut thickness, it has a lower thickness as compared to the science stand. And in terms of radial strength, it is, they are equal. And therefore, this is another attractive point, which is uh, in favor of uh, the iron stand, uh, if it can be resolved. And in terms of resorption, uh, is supposed to be completely degradable, completely resolved by two years, so from two up to 24 months. All right, and uh, this is from the animal studies in pigs, so whereby uh, by using uh, micro CT, OCT, and MRI, that the stent is still okay at three months, but by six months, it starts to break off at the joints. And therefore, this is something which is much applicable if you want to use this for patients for 
who will need surgical reconstruction which I'm targeting at, which is the use of our PDS stenting. And this is another example where six months you start to see the loss of integrity of the stent and they start to break up. And this by 13 months, a lot of the iron material has already been resolved. So the iron is actually uh, absorbed into uh, the vessel walls, uh, get taken up uh, macrophages uh, into hemosiderin and then to the spleen. Whereas the zinc in the same way is also resolved into the blood and tissues. So this is why I think to use it in a coagulation might not be a good idea because once uh, because it is a lot of the stent might be hanging in the aorta and therefore once the stent loses integrity then chunks might break off and go down to uh, in the synthetic vessel, you know, and so on. So our study objective, this is just a clinical uh, pilot study to see whether what we use was the uh, IBS non-drug eluting, and the main purpose is to evaluate the feasibility, safety, and effectiveness of it for PDA with simple morphology, which means that be IBS kind of uh, uh, PDA, but the patients are not actually simple because they are often quite sick. <coughs> And uh, we hope that this will be a basis for subsequent larger scale study in more complex PD because this is really where the target is because these are the patients who will require surgical reconstruction later on. Right, uh, what we are interested in basically is the acute results, how's the handling, the visibility on x-ray, as well as what happens in the ICU in terms of uh, post-procedure outcome, and also the post-discharge performance in terms of stent flow integrity up to nine months because this is where we like to send these patients for surgical reconstruction or at least have the second uh, care to look for what happens at the family arteries. Well, the other end points, if they don't last up to nine months, would be if they die before nine months or they need re-intervention before that in the way of either restenting or subjecting these patients for surgical repair uh, or even a petition. <coughs> So again, for this pilot study, we only target simple, we only recruit simple looking PDA like this. And these are uh, the protocol that we use, the follow up at one month, three months, and so on until nine months. And then these are the main things that we look for in terms of clinical assessment, imaging, as well as the iron studies in the follow up. <clears throat> so this is our first patient, the PIVS patient with this kind of typical right ventricle, very, very hypertensive RV as noted on this uh, uh, echocardiogram and this is the balloon dilation and this is looking at the PDA which is almost uh, occluded uh, very constricted uh, distal part and this is the primary artery and this is getting the wire across as uh, this is should be a simple kind of PDA morphology which is easily accessed with the wire from the primary artery and then this is looking at the ductus once the wire is, is across and then the stent is uh, passed along this wire. What is important is to make sure there's, there's not too much overhang into the aorta uh, to prevent the complication that I uh, alluded to earlier. And this is the stent being inflated. So this is the immediate post-stent uh, deployment. You can see that on the x-ray, you can see the two gold markers, but you can see the stent struts, right, in, on the, on the x-ray, and this is immediate a uh, few days later in the ICU, where we thought that the stent was a bit too generous. And at three months, we start to see some reduction in the flow of the patient as well, but she needed quite a bit of anti failure treatment because of the excessive flow uh, to the lungs. Right, sorry, this is uh, the five patients that we have done since the September last year, and uh, most of them, uh, all four, four except one is critical PS, and the rest are PIGS. And only one patient uh, that had as, as that is likely to be a single source flow to the uh, to the pulmonary arteries, and only received a stent. The rest received balloon dilatation together, or the stenting comes comes after uh, the balloon dilatation. Fairly long uh, as, as expected in terms of procedure time and fluoroscopy time, but the ICU stay is a bit prolonged. Uh, we thought that they would normally as uh, unusual, usually two, three, four days, but many of them are beyond two or three days. And I think a lot of this is uh, related to uh, too much flow to the lungs causing heart failure and longer ventilation. In fact, one of them 
uh, develop necrotizing enterocolitis after 14 days and we have to send this patient for surgical management. The patient did well, but I think this is probably related to the low alcoholic pressure per 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 persistently. So these are the preliminary results. So we were happy that there were no procedural problems. So the acute result is quite good. All 10 procedures were successful. There were no major complications. And all patients, patients were discharged to a different hospital or home, except one who had NAC and had to be referred for surgical treatment. Quite common, we see that uh, this patient required ventilation more than uh, 48 hours, and therefore this is uh, this is really 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 related to uh, overcirculation. There's one patient who was discharged well, but at one month she came back extremely ill in in, in extremis, and the patient died actually. So the, looking very hard, what might be the problem? Well, there is most likely a stent thrombosis, which which couldn't we couldn't capture on the echo, but uh, the history suggests that she was very sick the day before. And maybe this has triggered, this had triggered uh, thrombosis of the stent, and and we then we decided that maybe we should pro probably do uh, dual platelets for all these patients. And two of these patients had three months follow up, whereas two patients had one uh, one month follow up. So in conclusion, I think from our early acute results, we think that there is a reasonable outcome, good outcome from the, this IBS stents, which is bioreversible. But this pilot study is only based on PDA, patients with simple PDA morphology. In, in terms of implant easiness, X-ray visibility, they are fairly close to the bare metal stents. Uh, but I think we noticed that there is primary over-circulation, might be because of the thinness of the struts. And we probably have to use a smaller stent instead of a 4 millimeter stent, sorry. And we might need dual antiplatelets for especially those with single source family valve flow once the overshunting uh, settles. What, what I'm looking forward to is that we have a bigger number of patients and also a, a more complete follow up uh, study. And then we probably should target this for those who really need bioreservable stents, which, which means that complex PDA is what you have seen in the, all the previous talks and see whether this will help in terms of providing better right, surgical outcome and also le less complicated operations for, for our surgical colleagues. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Masni. I, I think you can continue to stay there. It's a, there are, we have another probably 10 minutes or 15 minutes for the... Can we... Yeah, Dr. John. Five minutes, okay. Yeah, please. Um, Masini, very exciting. Thank you very much for sharing this. Very, very exciting. Uh, just, just a couple of questions. First, um, what size of the guiding catheter you use for the? Uh, I see. Uh, it's four French uh, long sheath. Four French uh, two long, long sheath. sheath. Yeah, yeah. And so it's it, the same it as. It could be the... applicable for like guiding five French. Oh guidance, yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's okay. right. Yeah. Second question: What is your antiplatelet uh, protocol? See. It's Before aspirin, and after. aspirin, but then again, Only. after that patient that might have a problem of uh, post stent thrombosis, mm, mm. we are considering to use dual antiplatelets. Yeah, because my, my, my thought would be if we follow the adult coronary artery people, yeah. so DAP therapy is required yeah. for the drug eluting stent. Yeah. So if this is drug eluting, yeah. this, know, is, uh, yeah. stand, this so is non drug eluting, the one that I've asked them actually. But you, you, also, there is a serial, serolimus, right? No, not on the one they use in units, but for the adult study, yes, that is wrong. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. But I think the thing issue about the clopidogrel, I think the big study from David uh, from David Wessels on the uh, clarinet study, is it, it was shown that there was no real advantage of having two antipodes mm -hmm. on top of aspirin alone. So I'm not very sure, but looking at that, this is not something which is negligible. I think we probably need to consider uh, dual antithesis for all patients. So I think that's something else that will be... Excuse me, Masni. Thank yeah. you very much for your nice report. Good job. Uh, I want to know more about the uh, behavior of these kind of stents. For example, how much pressure you need for the extending it yeah. and uh, what uh, happened with recoiling. Uh, uh, you have this problem or not? Oh, sorry. Yes, uh, I, did, I, I did have uh, when we when I showed this slide comparing science stent to uh, IBS actually in terms of recall, recoil is the same, is the same. and in terms of what pressure is also up to 16 millimeter uh, 16 uh, atmospheres for, for this stent that we, we go up to 
Yeah, I think uh, the, the rest, uh, the, the rest of the speakers. I suppose we don't even have chairs, but uh, there's supposed to be a discussion for the for the whole session. Siva, yeah. <laughs> yes.